Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Wellness 360 and Webster Rec Center's Friday Night Educational Series. So I am Beth Perry, owner of Wellness 360, and this is Jay Verna. Say hey, Jay. <laughs> How's it going? Unfortunately, Jay has a little bit of lapse in his voice versus his um, mouth movement, so we'll all get a good laugh today. So yeah. we have been so um busy lately i apologize we haven't been on in a while but jay has some exciting news they opened back up the webster rec center to, let's just talk for a minute about what all you all are doing there now well we started camps uh let's see the week of june 29th so this is the third week so um if you uh see me a little distracted it's because there's little faces pressing against my office window here um so we've been doing the camps and then two weeks ago, the week of July 6th, we started outdoor fitness classes. We haven't been given the okay to open the uh, fitness center and do indoor fitness classes yet, but it's a start. It's something. So um, That is we'll super some, exciting. Yeah. We're doing, um, when the weather uh, doesn't cooperate. We're doing online stuff. We've been adding a lot to our YouTube channel. So if nothing else, this past four months, it's allowed us to develop uh, some of those skills and some of those resources. So um, yeah, it's it's been a strange ride for sure, but it's great to at least have more people in the building now. So yeah, I'm sure those hallways are really quiet when everything's shut down. Oh yeah, the first two or three months, it was just, yeah, it was basically me here you know it's but now it's it's slowly getting there so we, we hope to have some good news soon uh once the state gives us the okay to open up you know the fitness center will do so not sure when that's going to happen there hasn't really been any even whisper of it but you know we're gonna we're gonna focus on the positives and that's we got some outdoor stuff going and uh, camps going so Absolutely. And I found that with us, same thing. We haven't had the okay to start, but we've been doing our best to do online educational things. And we've been building our YouTube channel with a ton of free education. Uh, we're still doing Zoom classes live, which uh, are filling out and doing great. We're opening up all of our classes. We are attempting to start an outdoors class for the Parkinson's program. It's just been too hot for us. So um, we keep canceling it because of the heat, but we're doing the best we can. I think everybody in America right now is just doing the best we can. Yep, yep. So again, there's, uh, there's resources out there if you wanna stay moving, um, you know, stay exercising. You know, that's what we're trying to do at this point. Well, I think it's kind of ironic that Jay and I chose this title, but we're gonna be talking about digital minimalizing. Um, so we're going to be talking about the exact opposite of what COVID has thrown us into and about what um, consuming the digital media and how much it's consuming our time. So I want to just start with some statistics that I found. Um, we spend over five hours a day on our computer. That's including after 10 p.m. on 40% of days. So Remember Jay and I did that talk on sleep and how important it was to not be on your computer after 10 o'clock. And I gotta say, I am guilty as charged. I do do that sometimes, I try to limit it, but, um, and then we use over 56 apps and websites a day and switch between them more than 300 times. And we pick up our phone at least 58 times and spend close to four and a half hours on our phone a day. Now, that is a lot of hours in a day. And when you think about just the phone time alone, it kind of makes me laugh when people say they don't have time to exercise. <laughs> because if you really start to take advantage of, of timing yourself, and I do believe, I don't know where to find it, but I do believe there is something on your phone that, that tracks you and can tell you how long that you're spending on your, your phone. So I'd be curious to see how much time we actually do devote to our FaceTimes and our, um, our social media things and our Instagrams and our Twitter and, and Facebook. So we'll start with you, Jay. So let's define digital minimalism. Well, um, I, I think one point to make with all of this is not to say that 
technology is bad or that we shouldn't use it. It's how we can optimize it um, within our lives for value. So um, I think if you, for, from a definition, and actually this kind of, uh, Beth and I got this idea from, I don't know if you can see it, this book by Cal Newport. It's a really good read. I really, quick, easy read. Uh, but it kind of illuminated a lot of things for me, but it's basically uh, a philosophy of technology use in which you focus your online time on a small number of carefully curated or selected and optimized activities that strongly support things you value. So it's not kicking everything to the curb just because we think technology is bad. It's how can we uh, better use the technology um, at our fingertips that supports our values and allow us maybe some more free time to pursue things that will add value to our lives. Uh, that was a beautiful definition. So I'm really glad that I chose you to give it because I don't think I could have done any better. These talks really is just Jay and I's book club. We decide <laughs> which books we're going to read and then give a talk on them. So, so we really enjoy the education portion. Um, so he showed me that book. I'm jumped online. I, I rented it from the library. So I did the audio book. He did the reading book. So it was an excellent book if anyone wants to to give it a read. It was an easy read. So, but you think 24 seven, our mind is full of just noise. It's just like, and I catch myself sitting down and the TV's on and I'm bored and I'm like, I, I grab my phone and I just start scrolling through Facebook or just my, it's mindless scrolling. It's not mindful, which is what we really like to teach to, to be more mindful. Um, so the, we're not saying that we need to stop the digital options or the the apps or the devices but it's just finding out what your values are and trying to associate what you choose to do on the computer instead of that mind mindless searching and using apps for no reason and having these apps constantly your phone is constantly buzzing in your ear of updates and all of these apps telling you, you know, so-and-so's on or so-and-so posted or so-and-so this or so-and-so that. And, and it really draws you in. And what I found interesting about this book is I didn't realize all the science that went into why Facebook chose colors, why the phone vibrates for different things, why certain ads pop up the way they do. It's a real science to almost make you addicted to these programs. And it spent a lot of time in the book talking about these things that happen and the reasons behind the colors that they are and the, the way that they alert you and things to keep you drawn in, to keep you on that site. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a, uh, I think, um, one of the things that some of the more interesting parts of the book for me were when you look at the development of things like the smartphone um, and social media, the original intent was not what it is today. Uh, I think Facebook started out as a way to kind of catch up with old college uh, friends. Um, you know, the original iPhone was basically just to pair your music with having a telephone. So after all that happened probably within the last uh, eight to ten years is when i think we've seen that pro proliferation of social media and all these apps that have kind of slowly crept in and sucked a lot of our time away from us and there's another uh stat that they said that kale mentioned in his book um i'm probably going to get it wrong but it was something to the effect that anybody born from 1995 onward theoretically can be plugged in all the time never have you know a moment of true solitude where you don't have something coming into your brain from an outside source and it's kind of uh mind-boggling when you think of it that way it makes me feel pretty good that i was born when i was because um, as we'll talk about a little bit more putting aside a lot of these things has been relatively easy for me uh, i think a lot of the stuff we use professionally is one thing but kind of getting away from that mindless, um, you know, time drain of just, you know, being on there. But, you know, it's all about making money. And I think these social media companies have done a great job with that, making these uh, very addictive, making us feel like we have to, you know, um, we have to invest our time into this because we might miss something. So 
it's uh, it's almost scary when you think about it. Yeah, I was actually just talking to some business owners last night with my business partner, Lindsay, and some other business owners at the Chamber of Commerce event. And we were talking about we kind of missed that we we missed the gap. We we really don't get it. Uh, you know, people our age, we don't really some of us are more addicted. But I know for me, I don't like when I learned about Twitter, I just couldn't understand why somebody cared about what I what I was writing. Like, I don't, I don't use Twitter and I did it for the business. And, and then I hold my phone and I, and I do this. I'm like, what do I say? Like, why do people care with what I have to say in this minute? We don't, we don't understand the concept. Um, you know, I like to see my friends and things like that, but I don't understand the constant need of, of telling everybody what I feel about every situation, about what I'm eating, where I'm eating, what time I'm eating. I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't really get that either. And I think that's why, again, it's been relatively easy for me to kind of kick some of these habits uh, to the curve. And we, again, we can talk about it as we move on here. But um, I think it's, it's kind of, it, I think one of the big take homes uh, for me is that um, we don't realize, especially probably certainly in the last few years, with all that's going on in the world, when you're plugged in like this, it's a constant source of tension and stress. So when you're, you know, allowing yourself to be plugged in like this, uh, it, uh, to me, I think it has some negative health ramifications. You know, I think just just uh, the stress alone and a lot of the how we can better handle emotions, it makes it a lot tougher. Um, so when you're constantly being bombarded by all kinds of different opinions and, uh, you know, comments that can be very uh, socially charged and intense, um, for me, I, I like being kind of away from that. But I think for a lot of people, they don't, they don't realize the harm that it could be doing. Actually, that brings me to my next um, portion of my notes is our brains on multitasking, having this constant sensory coming to us 24 seven. Neuroscientists have actually studied this and they've actually found that it damages your brain. So doing more than, our brains were not meant to multitask. So it negatively affects our well being. It ne negatively affects our performance, our productivity. Um, studies show that when we spend time um, between media devices, watching TV, there's actual less density in the anterior um, cingulate cortex, which is your emotional formation, your processing, your learning, your memory. So that is um, a lot less developed in people that are constantly multitasking. So when we toggle between tasks, it actually depletes our body from energy. So if you wonder why you're so fatigued all the time, this constant being plugged in and never taking a rest from this external stimuli actually drains you and your body of energy, which can lower your immune system. Um, so it, uh, there was a study by Earl Miller, who is a neuroscientist at um, MIT, and he found that it takes 23 minutes and 15 seconds to refocus on a task after an interruption. So think about that at work. Think about, you know, you're doing something and you get a phone call or you're doing something and you decide to, you know, jump on an email. It takes 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get back on track. So um, I thought that was pretty, and, and I can see that because I'm very sensitive to these things. I have to be very I have to be focused on one thing at a time because if I'm doing this, that's why I can't take, I have a hard time taking notes in class. I either got to be listening or writing. Like my brain just doesn't multitask. Um, but it causes increased blood pressure, anxiety, and decreased productivity and creativity. So all of you business owners that want your employees to be more, um, more productive and more creative uh, is something you really want to read because I feel like it had a lot of great information about that kind of stuff. So let's oh, move wow. on and talk about um, digital declutter, what it is and how you do it. So we'll start with you, Jay. Um, well, basically it's, uh, it was a process that Cal Newport in his book discussed, which was 
it's like any other detox that you might read about. Um, but basically, it's a 30-day period where you will take a break from optional technologies in your life. And I think optional is really the key word there because there's are technologies that some of us uh, uh, they're not optional optional for uh, doing our work. So that's really kind of the the key thing. Um, so basically, during the 30-day period, you explore and rediscover activities and behaviors that that you actually might find satisfying and meaningful. Um, uh, and he spends quite a bit of time too in this book, especially the second part of it, is understanding what that is, what, how to fill that void. And you know, those statistics you gave at the beginning of how much time daily we spend on our phones and social media, that's a considerable amount of time to fill. What do we fill it with? And that's you know uh, something he discussed a lot. Um, but basically, uh, his his uh, message was to really think about those optional technologies and take a break from all of them, and even things like video games, which I'm not a huge gamer, but there are some games I like to play. I don't think I'm addicted to them. Um, and even things like TV, Netflix, uh, consider you know, kick into the curb for the 30 days. And then at the end of it, reintroducing those technologies, optional technologies, um, back into your life, basically with a blank slate. So basically you wanna determine what value each technology you reintroduce into your life and how specifically you'll use it so you maximize its value. So instead of just mindlessly, you know, getting on the phone and looking at Facebook or checking Instagram for, you know, uh, how people reacted to your latest post, it's how am I going to use this stuff to support those values? And then hopefully within that 30 day period, um, you know, you will also fill that void with, you know, other activities, whether it's reading more. I know for me, I've always been an avid reader, but since I've made some of these changes myself, just in the last four months alone, the, the amount of uh, real paper books I've read has been quite astonishing. So I spent a lot of the same time I would have looking on Facebook with my nose in a, in a book. And again, not everybody's into reading or whatever, so it doesn't have to be that. Um, but the, the main goal is, is just to take a break from it, reset things, and try to fill it with something that's going to add more value and meaning to your life. And he goes through some different steps on it. Um, you know, basically defining your own technology rules. You know, the goal is to take a break from optional technology. So you need to define which, with those, which tech technologies fall into uh, that category. Um, so basically, a, a good rule of thumb would be consider the technology optional unless it temp its temporary removal would harm or significantly disrupt your, uh, your daily life, you know, professional or personal. So you don't want to confuse, however, convenient with critical. Something critical is something, you know, like you don't want to give up all text messages when that's the one way you rely on knowing when to pick your kid up from camp or whatever it might be. Um, so there are some rules and, and things in there, but again, it's really trying to be as strict as you can, removing as much of those efforts uh, optional technologies as possible. Giving yourself a break from it, the first few days is probably going to be tough for a lot of people. Um, in fact, people I've talked to are like, oh, I'm not going to give up my phone. You know, I'm, you know, I take it to bed with me every night. I got to have it on me. I have my Apple Watch. I have to be constantly connected. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what connection truly is, uh, hopefully, as we move forward in this discussion. But essentially, that's what the, the digital declutter or detox is. Yeah, I find it's it's more than even just a detox. It's more about developing a new and healthier relationship with technology. So um, it's it's an intentional usage. Um, you know, finding out what your values are. Like for me, my email is is uh, I have to use my email. But I found that now working from home, I'm checking my email constantly instead of picking times of the day to check my email. I'm just constantly walking by my computer, checking my email, checking my email, and trying to respond as quickly as possible. Well, in the real world, that's not always necessary. So it's, it's me making the choice instead of, of checking it every couple minutes, now I'm checking it twice a day. And then after hours, I'm not checking it unless I'm expecting something important. But it's, and it's finding out what you're willing to give up. Maybe your first 30-day 30, 30 detox 
you just can't give up Facebook because there's an addiction. I mean, it's probably one you need to give up, but start off small. Start off with maybe giving up some of the other things um, and then work your way into the bigger things. Um, not to throw my daughter under the bus, but when she was a teenager, I found that when I take her phone for punishment, she actually became a normal human being. So it just was, there was such an addiction to her phone that it created this monster, this teenage, you know, I need to know what's going on. I need to be here getting angry when she wasn't invited somewhere, you know, hearing what other people were saying, taking it personal. So when I would take that away from her uh, for a week or two, she actually started wanting to come around and wanting to do things with the family. And she was polite and kind and helped out. And it was just a completely different, almost like it changed her brain, which we found out now through neuroscience that it really does. Um, and then just trying to create real life relationships. Like instead of texting someone, give them a call. Or instead of emailing, say, hey, let's grab lunch together. You know, just becoming back to being personable with people as opposed to using a screen. Um, and then get outside, you know, get outside, take a walk. So you can fill that void time with, like Jay said, reading. For me, it's exercising or, or biking or, or hiking or doing something out in nature, um, trying to find people to have relationships with, striking up conversations with people that I wouldn't have typically spoke with. Um, I found, found when I did some detoxing of my phone, I was bored, like, now what do I do? So it took a while to get comfortable with being quiet because your brain is so used to that constant stimulation that when it wasn't there, it felt weird. So filling it with yoga, with meditation, filling it with things that are gonna create a more positive atmosphere. So it's okay to give up your evening Facebook or your evening Netflix to go do some gentle yoga or do some kind of body movement with some meditation. Um, I think that's a great way. Um, but try to unplug at least an hour a day. Even if you just start there, just unplug from everything for an hour a day and obviously up to two hours before you go to bed for other reasons that we've discussed before. Um, and just respect, reset your perspective on this. I mean, I think that computers and phones are a great asset to have, but I also think that we've taken advantage of them. So I feel like if we just change our perspective and using things because we need to use them and not because we're bored or we're um, craving that feedback of someone liking your post or um, needing you know, needing something that you don't really need, like wanting that, um, that void filled or trying to fill that empty space or that empty time or fill that quiet time with something um, necessary. So it's all about just setting healthy boundaries with yourself, setting he healthy boundaries with your, um, with your computer, with your phone, with your, your gaming system, whatever that is, but intentionally decreasing your screen time you know, on purpose, not because you got really busy one week and you just happened to fill the void with filling your brain with other things. It's just like intentionally walking away from things and saying, you know what, this is my time. I'm going to go do something for myself. Um, so let's move on to, let's talk a little bit about solitude. We'll start with you, Jay. Yeah. Um, one quick thing I want to just uh, kind of talk about what you were just um mm -hmm talking about is, yeah, there's so many different ways you can fill time. Uh, it could even be finally getting around to those home projects you've been meaning to, learning a new skill, whether it's playing an instrument, um, becoming more handy with your hands. I mean, anybody, I think we've all been there where when we've taken the time, put in the toil to learn something, build something, and actually accomplish something meaningful, whether, you know, renovating a room at your house, how that makes you feel truly fulfilled it's those types of things i think we can fill um also too like like you said you know fitness exercises movement meditation all those things are good but really any hobby that really forces you to kind of be disconnected from technology use your hands use your brain um, and accomplish something that's going to add value to your life so the other thing too is i i think we don't always understand what connection is because 
having 5,000 friends on Facebook, you're not connected with all of those people. It's mm -hmm. really, if we think about it, there's really very few people in all of our lives that we truly connect with, whether it's our spouse, you know, our children, you know, a handful of really good friends that we actually like to go out with and talk with face to face. So those are the type of connections that um, I think are truly important. So as you're looking, and again, maybe it's, it's me, but I think we all have these stories of those Facebook friends of ours that we see their posts and it just annoys the heck out of you. It's like, I really don't care that you got up at 5 a.m. and had this for breakfast and now you're going to go do this and that. And, you know, that's great. And if that adds value in your life, but to me, that's not a meaningful connection. So um, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of ways we can kind of get around it. And you were talking too about scheduling time to check your email. I think one of the, the really cool things that I liked, uh, an example in the book was, um, instead of just texting people all the time, you know, putting a notification on your phone. Um, I'm not available right now, but if you want to call me between 5 and 7 p.m. tonight, I would, I would love to have a conversation with you over the phone. So things like that where you can truly engage with people and actually talk rather than always just relying on. And I get it. Texting is quick and easy. You're going to pick someone up. Hey, I'm here. You know, it's all well and good. We all do it. But I think uh, when it comes to connection, sometimes there's a little bit of misunderstanding of what that truly is. And I think things like this can really help us identify what that is and really get back to meaningful connection. When it comes to solitude, I think um, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I value uh, a lot. I tend to spend as much time as I can by myself, whether it's working out, going out for a walk or a run. I'm the type of person that, uh, when, especially when it comes to fitness, I'm not really a social creature. I like doing things by myself. I like the sounds in my own mind. I don't always need or want to have that input. But basically, solitude is one of those things that um, just having time away from, from outside input into your brain, just being alone with your own thoughts. And it's not like something that you have to do 24-7 because we do need some kind of connection to complete our overall health and well-being. But I think if we don't spend the time to... Um, have that solitude. It could be five, 10 minutes a day, um, you know, doing a meditation or doing some yoga or just going for a walk uh, in nature. Because I think when we don't have it, um, it's, it, you know, solitude, I think is really crucial for allowing us to process emotions, reflect on relationships and what's important in our life. When we constantly have this stream of info coming in and all its different, uh, you know, shapes and forms, we really don't have um, that ability to, tr to really self-reflect. So, and I think, again, for a lot of you know, the, the younger generations, again, anybody that was born you know, 1995 or, or after, that's such a foreign thought. You know, again, for me, it's pretty easy because it's something I've always done. I didn't grow up with all this, but you know, I'll use my son as an example. You know, he would be plugged in all the time if, if we allowed him to do that. And I think that's just the world he's grown up into. Uh, and, and I think we need to have some time away. So for me, it's kind of, um, that's what solitude is, just away from any type of uh, outside uh, voices or, or information coming into your head, just being alone with your thoughts. I think solitude can be really complicated for some people um, because just in mindfulness meditation, sometimes when we're quiet, those thoughts that we've been repressing and trying to run away from start to surface and um, and a lot of people find um, their self-esteem is attached to these external forces um, which is really sad um, and unfortunate but this generation of wanting to be you know for us we had to actually physically walk to the store and get a magazine like it wasn't in our hand 24 7. so seeing all of these self gratification youtube videos and and i mean go for it if people are making money and doing great things i'm not against them i just feel like it's setting us up for um, our children never thinking they have enough it's setting us up for always wanting to keep up with the joneses it's setting us up well if you know so and so didn't like my post but she liked this post then I must not, you know, have value to her. And we really start relating ourselves to what we don't have as opposed to loving our lives for what we do have, um, which I think can really 
can really, it's walking a really sensitive line between depression and um, look at the uh, suicide rates shooting up in younger kids. And um, I mean, I know there's a lot that goes into that, but um, I'm sure this constant connection with the external world of things that aren't really reality. I mean, do we post ourselves first thing in the morning, you know, as we're rolling out of bed? No, we Photoshop and we use the lamps and the lights and the, you know, we, we don't, we take, oh my gosh, I, there was a group of girls and I was waiting to do this hike in this waterfall, but I was giving them the respect to get their pictures. They took 350 pictures and they swooped their hair to one side and they swooped their hair to another side. And it was just like, no, that's not good. Let me see it. That's not good. That's not. When we were young, you took a picture and you had to wait two weeks for it to get developed and get mailed back to your house or you picked it up from a store. Like we didn't get to take all of these selfies and um, comparisons to others. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know it's uh i i think um with uh a lot gets lost in translation um with social posts or texting um someone can say something and you take it a completely different way or even a post on facebook or a comment mm -hmm. and you can take it a completely different way from what it was meant and next thing you know you're obsessing about that that's why to me good old-fashioned communication talking face to face or actually having a conversation where you could notice you know all those different facial expressions and inflections in someone's voice when they're um talking to you where you can get a better picture or a better read on what's actually happened than you know what's that the comment that you got or did not get on your social media post that's driving you nuts so again not not to uh you know be one of those old people that are just raining on the newest generation's parade. But we are, Jay. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's how they're growing up. This is the world that they're in and they have to learn how to deal with it. But I think a lot of, of, of what you said and what we're talking about um, can potentially be very unhealthy. And, and again, there's science that's linking a lot of this stuff to anxiety, depression, and all these things, not just in the younger de generation, but in people in general. So um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, again, you know, it, it's not sitting here saying technology is bad, never use it. I mean, technology has given us a lot of great things, a lot of breakthroughs in, you know, uh, medical science and all these other things. So just need to learn how to use it uh, better, I think, um, to give us value. To me, it, that's, it, it's as simple as that. But uh, the, the tough part is figuring all that out. Yeah. So solitude actually allows our brain to rest, which just like our body, our brain needs to rest. We need, we, ha we are in a world of overstimulation from the horns and outside noises and, you know, our computer and those constant notifications, which is something I really liked in the book because, you know, just turn off the notifications. It's okay to, to not know you got a text message right away. It's okay to not know just that constant need for self-gratification. Uh, but we have radios, internet, street noises, barking dogs. So it's just, just walking away from all of that and giving your brain time to just decompress. Um, and solitude actually jumpstarts our parasympathetic nervous system, which we've talked about many times before, but it's a branch of our autonomic nervous system that actually calms us down. It's when we rest and digest. So we wonder why people have all of these digestive issues, heartburn, indigestion, um, acid reflux, ulcers, you know, constipation, diarrhea, all these things. You're, when you are in that constant state of noise and that constant state of go, 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 and you never bring yourself into that solitude or that place of parasympathetic nervous system um, where your muscles start to relax, your blood pressure decreases, your heart rate slows. Um, so when you're in that constant state of adrenaline and go, 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 and what's next and how can I do this? And, oh, here's an app, you know, I want to play 50 hours of Candy Crush, you know, these, that constant need, it, it, our digestive system doesn't work properly. And we're in that constant state of go, 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 go. And our bodies are in our minds don't have a chance to decompress, to heal, which is the rest and digest phase um our bodies heal in that parasympathetic nervous phase so we're really doing our bodies a huge injustice by not taking that time to just walk away and again it can be as little as you know what i'm going to make it a point that one hour a day i don't use any device 
Um, it can be as small as that, or maybe not taking it when you go for your walk, you know, not listening to music, listening to the sounds or, or inviting a neighbor, even better to go for a walk with you or take your child for a walk or your dog for a walk and just have that really calming sense of solitude. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, I am actually notorious for leaving my phone places because um, I don't like it, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Um, when, uh, but after I read this book, the first thing I did was I removed all, pretty much all the apps off my phone, but definitely all my social media. So really the only time I check Facebook, and it's kind of ironic because this is going to be on Facebook and we do a lot of our work on Facebook, but um, I have to actually log in on my computer, which is a super pain in the butt. So I rarely check my own Facebook page anymore. Um, and I'm really good at, like, if I go out for a run or I go out for a walk, I never take my phone. If I'm going out sometimes with my wife, you'll, she'll say, hey, where's your phone? Can you uh, call or text? Uh, I left it at home. So I might be the other extreme, but for me, the other thing I've even thought about too is uh, one of the guys in the book uh, actually went back to one of those old fashioned flip phones with no apps on it. I'm like, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty hardcore for a lot of people to even think about. But um, the way I look at it is it's like, I, I turned all of my notifications off. So really my phone is for, receiving texts and I do have a news feed, which I've kind of um, edited. So it's only stuff that uh, I enjoy reading. Um, so for me, it, it was as simple as it is that for me. For other people though, doing those things, and I'm sure people are forming an opinion of me right now as being probably a pretty boring guy, but um, I don't find a whole lot of value and I find a lot of those things to be very annoying. I don't want to be around my phone and, I, and I'm very thankful I don't have a job where I have to keep it on me 24-7. Uh, I think I mentioned this in one of our other talks too. My phone goes off by 8, 8.30 at night. I don't even keep it upstairs. I have a docking station downstairs. It charges overnight. I hopefully remember to grab it on my way out the door uh, to work the next morning. So for me, that helps out a lot. There's other things I'd rather be um, spending my time doing. But again, this is probably ex way too extreme for most people. Just Find a little something that's different. Like you said, put your phone down for five minutes. Start with that. Then 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. and maybe have a conversation with your child, your spouse, your neighbor, a friend, um, and, and, and maybe start developing some relationships that way because it's it's kind of scary. We've, we've gotten away from a lot of that too. And I found too, a lot of my um, uh, communication, even with my parents, is by text. They love texting. But the more I think about it, especially as they get older, it's like, how hard is it for me just to give them a call and actually talk mm -hmm. like you used to all the time? So, um, again, it's, it's about finding what works best for you. Um, but there are a lot of kind of creative ways you can. And for some people, maybe it is uh, taking some apps off your phone to make it harder for you to, to check. And maybe initially it's tough, but I guarantee you, you get a week or two in and you'll probably just start feeling a lot better. Probably a lot less tense. Um, because let's face it, there's a lot of inflammatory uh, stuff going on in social media. Um, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinions, certainly, but um, personally, I really don't want to be plugged into any of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's mind blowing to me when I when I talk to people and the whole time that we're having a conversation and they're on their phone or they're they're like searching social media while having their conversation with me, and then they you know are are talking about how annoying their kids are and how, you know, you can just tell they're just overly stressed. They're yeah. just overwhelmed by everything in life. And then in the same breath, they say, and I don't know why my neck is hurting so bad. Yeah. And I just yeah. smile because it just, you don't realize in that sympathetic nervous phase, your muscles naturally tense up. So if you are constantly living in that phase, your muscles are in a constant state of tension and you wonder why you have chronic pain. You wonder why you have these chronic conditions, like you were saying, the inflammatory conditions, the chronic, um, and I found, you know, just that, that constant stimulation and stress. For me, I, I would go back to my flip phone in a second. I loved my flip phone. It was my favorite phone ever. Um, I'm a little more advanced than Jay is. <laughs> I do <laughs> enjoy some, some qualities oh, of having this stuff in my life. 
<laughs> but and that's why you always see uh, it's always Wellness 360 running the show as far as these educational things. So yeah. Jay just logs on with the, the code. But I have to learn for my job because it is part of my job. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of it. But um, I have to make sure that I, you know, I walk. I'm more of the I'm going to unplug for an hour. I'm going to, mm. you know, I'm going to, if I'm going to watch TV, I'm going to watch TV. I'm not going to mm. multitask on my phone and watching TV. So for mm. me, it was, I did not go as extreme. I did turn off my notifications. I did unfollow. It's a beautiful button on Facebook. You don't unfriend people. You just unfollow. So I'm only following a couple people. So I don't see a lot of the stuff that happens on my Facebook page well, on my personal one. Because I've unfollowed, I've started following a couple groups that are positive um, and they just constantly put positive quotes and things that I really enjoy and there's fitness tips. And so uh, my, I have designed my Facebook feed to bring me joy. So um, if there's a lot of political stuff, unfollow. If there's a lot of, you know, extreme religious stuff, unfollow. Um, if there's a lot of people that just are chronic complainers, unfollow then you if i want to see them i just type in their name and i go to their page on purpose not right. because it's being thrown at me so it was a really great feature that facebook did um so let's talk a little bit about how to reclaim our leisure time um just letting go of distractions and really focusing on what matters in life so in my um mindfulness program and a lot of the programs that i run the first thing we do is we write down our five biggest priorities in life and if it doesn't follow in line with those major priorities so obviously mine's my husband mine's my son and my daughter and um, myself and so I still have, I mean, I have, you know, my grandparents and some, and, and some family members that I, that I really love, but I unplug from everything except for that for a while, even if it's just a week or two. So whatever apps or computers keep those relationships blossoming and moving forward, I'm okay with keeping those. If it's other apps for a week or two, I just unplug. I completely, just like you said, I wipe them off of my phone and I just really pay attention to things that are really important in my life, which is why it brings us back to what our values are. Yeah. How about you for reclaiming your leisure time? Um, well, first thing, I wanna make a little caveat. Um, for work, I actually have to use social media. So I, I do continue <laughs> to that. Um, and I will occasionally, and I, I like what you said too, because there's some professional groups that I follow on Facebook and, and those are the ones that I get the most value out of, um, things where, you know, private Facebook forums where you can discuss whether it's nutrition, strength and conditioning. So you're, you're absolutely right. There are really some good wholesome ways you can engage with it. You don't have to throw it out entirely. Um, but I, I think, um, I, it, it's going to sound kind of funny, but learning to engage physically with real world three dimensional objects again, instead of this little thing with buttons and, you know, swiping and scrolling all the time. So, um, again, I, I said it earlier, anybody that's ever undertaken any type of home improvement project or hobby that, um, involves creativity and building something and then the satisfaction i mean it could be learning how to brew beer or wine and then seeing with the, or cooking or, or things like that so to me putting your time and energies into things like that um and it's amazing how well you feel when you know maybe you uh you know did your first plumbing project without destroying a house or you know remodeled your first bedroom and it came out great and, and every time you look at it or you go into that room you know it was your hands and it was your effort that did it so um for me it's things like that it could also be too uh tapping into um, maybe creative sense you know if you're an artistic type person if you like music and you, you want to learn to play an instrument so to me those are things that can really give us a lot of satisfaction and kind of get us in that state where we're not constantly being barraged by things that, you know, maybe don't have a whole lot of value or hold a whole lot of wholesomeness for us uh, when we engage in them. So to me, that's kind of, um, you know, engaging with the physical world and developing skills uh, to, to create things of value. And again, it could just be on a personal level. 
Yeah, I'm the mom that uh, tends to uh, bring the kids together. So we're, our, we're the house that we like the kids to come to. So, you know, we just say, you know what, that's it. All electronic devices stay at the front door. All TVs are off. You guys got to figure it out. Go build a fort or play in the trees. Or um, I've, I've bought canvases for them all to paint pictures and rocks. When my son and I have painted rocks and he's put them, you know, on the trails that we walk and um, but but you have we have to get back to like Jay said just touching things and having real conversations and you know sometimes we wonder why we're so stressed in life and if you really take a good um, invoice and take a good like comb through your life and you look at you know well I have these dogs that constantly bark and I have you know my kids never are satisfied and. Um, I've got, you know, I've got the TV on the background 24 seven and it's on the news. I mean, heaven forbid, it's the news 24 seven, you know, and, and everything on the newspaper is doom and gloom. And, you know, you wonder why you're feeling low or feeling drained or feeling like uh, decreased energy or getting sick a lot. Um, really take a real deep look at your life and see what's around you? What's, what are you, what are you on purpose surrounding yourself with? And a lot of times we say, well, it's not on purpose. These things just happen to me. But I think that if you really look into your life, there's a lot of detoxing that you can do um, of like, first, if we don't, we don't watch the news. If I want to know something, I look it up. Um, if it's something big, someone will say something to me that'll might pique my interest, but I, I do on purpose research, not just aimless letting other people's opinions enter my mind. I'm not saying that watching the news is a bad thing. I turn it on for an, for an hour, but just not sitting there obsessed. I've known people that sit and watch the weather channel all day long and it's hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and devastation. And I'm like, just turn it off. You know, <laughs> it's just for a little bit, just enough to give your time, you know, your body some time to rest and relax. But the one thing I teach in my mindfulness class all the time is you have the power and the choice to surround yourself with what you want to in life. So we got to stop playing the victim. We have to realize there's things in our life that we can change. Turn it off, turn off the notifications, set the settings on Facebook, unfollow people. Again, you don't have to unfriend them. You can still look them up and, and see their pictures of their family vacation or whatnot, but you don't need it constantly being spoon fed to you every day. Um, set a time that you're going to check your emails. Um, watch things that make you laugh. If you're going to spend some time on TV, watch some things with your family, bring out the, the old school air popper, pop some popcorn and sit with your kids on the couch and watch a family movie, you know, just bringing things back to human connection. How about yeah. closing Jay, anything you want to wrap up? Uh, I think I, I liked everything that you said. And um, I think a lot of it is just uh, reestablishing what's important you know it's kind of funny all of the talks that we've had i mean everything is so intertwined when it comes to our health you know you talk about even the low level aches and pains we have there are simple simple nine eight to nine times out of ten it's simple stuff we don't necessarily have to go to physical therapist or get medical help it's just unplug learn how to breathe properly and next thing you know that pain between your shoulder blades or in your low back guess what? It starts to feel a little bit better. So um, there's so many profound impacts of that, but I, I agree. Um, Re-engaging, whether it's with your kids, your parents, your, uh, you know, your loved ones, and actually have real conversations with them. I think kids, most kids, and this is what I found, if you give them an opportunity and you take them to go do something, you know, or get them with their friends where they're doing something outside in the physical world, more often than not, they're going to, they're going to take that opportunity. So I think um, from that perspective, it's kind of incumbent on us as parents to uh, help them and push them in that direction. Let's face it, though, sometimes um, it's really easy to take the lazy route and just let them do their own thing so we can do our own thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I agree. Just you know, figuring out what, what gives you value um, and just, you know, I think when it comes to health and wellness, all the years I've spent in it, we can give you all this information. We can tell you how to get stronger. We can tell you how to do this or that. Ultimately, you have to make the choice 
to want to do it. Um, and I think um, don't wait for some kind of motivation to do it. Just take that first step and then things tend to uh, roll after that. So um, yeah, I think uh, just understanding what, what true connection is. I love it. I love this. Uh, I was, I love this. I just, I love everything about our talk today. Um, I just, again, and I just want to reiterate what Jay said, we can educate all that, um, that we know. And Jay and I are both, we are lifelong learners. We're both the kind of person that we are just going to constantly research. We're going to constantly do. Um, so you don't even have to do the research. You can just come to our talks and listen um, to what, you know, the latest and, and, updated information but you alone have to take that first step and that doesn't mean that jay and i won't support you 100 percent the best that we can but you have to make the choice to take it so we hope that you enjoy the educational portions that we give you uh, we hope that you learn something and if anything again today's about just making that social connection and um, on purpose, again, all of this stuff is always on purpose, on purpose, just stepping away from your technology for a little bit or, or finding some new ways to get creative with um, using your hands and, and being closer to your family. And I think that just making those few steps, you are gonna be absolutely mind blown at how your crabby teenager starts to become normal again and how your, your kids that are constantly complaining actually wanna help cook and they want to be a part of the family and and you're just gonna be amazed at all of a sudden you have that man that's sitting next to you on the couch for you know 10 12 years also he becomes a person and you actually start to enjoy his presence again and it's just amazing the things that start to unfold when you really start taking care of your mind and your body I so i hope that you've enjoyed this um, check out Jay and the Webster Rec Center. They're doing some amazing things. I'm super excited to get back in and teach yoga soon, as soon as the governor gives us the go ahead um, for my seniors. And um, I know for Wellness 360, we have a new online platform where you can get classes for Parkinson's, osteoporosis, joint pain, low back pain, mindfulness and bariatric surgery for move for weight loss you can get all of those exercise programs for one really low cost and um, all the exercises are designed by me and by lindsay so you're getting physical therapy um, exercises safe and effective for that diagnosis for one low price so check us out wellness360fitness.com and webster rec center yeah, Webster uh, uh, and Recreation, come to our Facebook page for regular updates, uh, programs we're offering. Uh, check out our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash Webster Recreation, I believe. Uh, you can just Google it. Um, we'll also, we also put links to it on our Facebook page all the time. So, and again, you know, if there's something you're looking for, you wanna learn about, a topic you think would be good for us to talk about, leave it in the comments. I just like to hear from people. <laughs> like to know that yeah, people give us are, are out there and have listened, you know, just say, hey, hi is, is, is good. But yeah. And you know what? To wrap it up, um, just live your life with intention. That's really what it comes down to. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Well, thank you all so much for joining and we'll catch you again on a Friday night. <laughs>